Now, in terms of water, uh, we don't think there's much in the way of liquid water on Mars. Now, if I were giving this lecture a couple of years ago, I'd say no liquid water. But there is some evidence that during some uh, uh, rock slides, uh, landslides that have happened on Mars, that it's unweighted the interior, and so some liquid water that was existing beneath the surface uh, was able to escape and exist for a very short time as liquid water on the surface. But there's very, liquid, uh, there's very little or no liquid water on the surface. But we do have uh, water vapor and we have water ice. <laughs> okay, so the water vapor then uh, turning to ice is indicative of a low atmospheric pressure. And we have what's called a sublimation. At this low pressure, the uh, water turns straight from ice to, uh, to gas. to take, say, 95% of the Earth's atmosphere away, the same thing would happen with the Earth. Uh, because it takes the weight of the Earth's atmosphere to keep our oceans liquid. Okay? And so if we had only 5% of the Earth's atmosphere right now, uh, then all of our oceans would evaporate and leave behind a bunch of ice in the ocean basins. And so you just have what we have on Mars, which is what's called a sublimation. And it skips the liquid phase at low pressure. It's called sublimation. Okay. However, and this is a big mystery, uh, there is evidence for liquid water flowing in the past. Just like there's evidence for liquid water existing on the surface of Venus, too, in the past. That those two planets, Venus and Mars, took very different paths to where they are today. Uh, and uh, so the evidence for the liquid water, we can see up on the data projector, there's some pictures of uh, um, uh, dry stream beds, basically. Here, and this is one on the Earth, here's one on Mars. We see the same basic kind of pattern. Here we have some, what look like some significant amounts of uh, uh, water erosion that are happening, maybe even some lakes and things here. Uh, there's a big crater. And here's some more uh, looks at these uh, eroded stream channels. That's, it was thought back uh, in the late 1800s that these were actually canals that were uh, created by Martians to bring water from the polar ice caps to the dry equatorial regions. That when we look at these now, we see that these are just uh, dry stream beds, basically. And so there's plenty of evidence then or, and here's some other pictures of the surface. Uh, we've had quite a few Martian rovers that have checked out the surface <coughs> looking for life. And basically where they go are places where they think that water once flowed. Because in the places where water has flowed in the past, you may have signs of life. And maybe even life that could have survived the evaporation of the water. How do we think that that's possible? Well, we find some, uh, 
we find some uh, uh, bacteria living in just solid rock, 100 feet below the ground, uh, and with no real apparent source of water at all. And they uh, reproduce maybe once every, the cells divide once every thousand years or so, and they're just really life in the slow lane. And so we're looking for things like that with our little Martian rovers. And here's another place where it looks like there was a pretty good lake in the past, and you can see uh, the geologic evidence for the shoreline. Okay, and so it, this is the kind of evidence that, that indicates that liquid water is flowing in the past, but we see that this not anymore. So the question, of course, the big mystery is what happened. And so uh, there are some different possibilities. And sometimes when you make a list of possibilities, you say, well, this is either or. But here, it could be combinations of all of them together that have uh, resulted in Mars losing its water. One possibility is that once Mars lost its atmosphere, due to A, low surface gravity, and B, due to the fact that it once had a magnetic field, that it doesn't anymore. We know that because we are able to analyze rocks that have landed on the Earth that we know are from Mars that have magnetic alignment of their magnetic domains uh, that can be dated back to the early part of the solar system within a couple hundred million years of when the solar system first formed. Okay? And so the evidence then is that uh, Mars lost its magnetic field early. And this is like an umbrella then that uh, protects it from uh, the onslaught of solar wind particles. So uh, solar wind particles could then evaporate the atmosphere. Let me show you how this works on the Earth. On the Earth, the Earth has a strong magnetic field. And by the way, we'll talk more about magnetic fields when we get to the Sun, because that's a, um, this is a kind of a minor point right now, but it becomes more significant when we start talking about the Sun. But the Earth has a magnetic field. This is magnetic north. And it's very much like what would happen if you uh, put a bar magnet inside of the Earth. And so then particles that come from the Sun are ejected, like high energy protons. This is called solar wind particles. So instead of coming in and knocking uh, uh, molecules of our atmosphere away, what happens instead is that these particles start to spiral along the Earth's magnetic field lines, and some are actually steered all the way around and miss the Earth entirely. So the Earth's magnetic field acts like an umbrella. to stop uh, the evaporation of the Earth's atmosphere. Okay. 
Okay, and so we think that Mars also had this at first because of the evidence of what we've been able to determine from the alignments of uh, magnetic minerals and meteorites that have come from Mars. Uh, but then it lost its magnetic field. When did that happen? We think it happened when Mars got its block knocked off, that northern hemisphere collision that we talked about. That seemed to disrupt the interior energy flow, and it's these moving charged particles in the interior that generate the magnetic field. And so somehow that motion got disrupted. Mars lost its magnetic field, and then the solar wind particles can then eject the Martian atmosphere. Same thing we think would have happened to the Earth if the Earth didn't have a good magnetic field, is that it would have lost its atmosphere long ago. And so having a magnetic field then is a big deal in protecting the atmosphere from the onslaught of high energy particles which would tend to knock our atmosphere away that come from the sun. Okay, and so uh, we think that Mars then lost its atmosphere because it lost its protective umbrella but it also has a much lower surface gravity to hold on to the particles of the atmosphere. So slowly but surely the Martian atmosphere evaporated but once it evaporated, it has a lower pressure. And that lower pressure then prevents water from existing in the liquid state. Another possibility, this is possibility one, possibility two, and, and this is kind of restating the obvious, but um, Mars is red, okay? So if there's water at one time, may have reacted to produce um, rust, which is the red color we see. It's like the uh, elephant in the room, right? We, so, well, it's red, so that, maybe that's telling us something. It's telling us there was a huge amount of rust that happened as large amounts of water interacted and then the oxygen was taken off from the H2O, and then that becomes ferrous oxide, FeO, uh, and so you get rust. Uh, and so that's our red color on Mars. So some of the water could have gone to that. And then another possibility is that CO2 could combine with water and calcium minerals in a similar fashion to what we talked about, the greenhouse mechanism on Venus and the Earth. Okay, and so you could have calcium reacts with CO2, which is the atmosphere of Mars, and water to produce limestone. Is calcium carbonate. Now, this, although it's suggestive that this is a possibility, we haven't found any big uh, uh, supplies of limestone on the surface of Mars yet. So, this is going to have to be tentative based on us actually being able to find large amounts of limestone in the geology of Mars. Uh, but this is certainly very suggestive that Mars has the red color and that water can easily combine with iron to form iron oxide. And, and then we know that the Martian atmosphere has been uh, dissipating over time. Uh, and uh, uh, so that uh, uh, also uh, creates a situation in which water uh, can't uh, exist because of the low atmospheric pressure and the sublimation of water. And so where else could the water be? Well, the water is in the ice caps. Uh, 
but also under pressure you can get water in the subsurface because there's pressure not from the atmosphere but from the pressure of the soil pushing down and so we think that there could be some subsurface water and also permafrost. So then is there life on Mars? Well, we're interested in that. Has there ever been life on Mars? Well, we can look here at some evidence that was thought to be life on Mars. Uh, and this created a big stir back in the 1990s when uh, Bill Clinton was president. Uh, some uh, NASA scientists uh, showed this picture and announced that they found life on Mars. And so this looks very suggestive, really interesting. Uh, it looks like maybe some kind of fossilized bacteria here as found on a Martian meteorite that landed in Antarctica had the right chemical composition to be, have come from Mars. Uh, and so it's a done deal that it came from Mars, but uh, these scientists were discredited eventually because a geologist came along and said, wait a minute, I've seen these structures in minerals before that aren't alive. And so that blew their whole argument, and uh, so it's still a big question mark whether this is evidence for life on Mars or not. It certainly looks like life to me, and it looked like life to a lot of the people that were looking at it. But there is a strange transition that takes place between the uh, formation of minerals and the formation of life. And so we don't know what all of these steps are yet. And so it could just be something that was mimicking some life processes that was, in fact, just a simple mineral that had never made it to what we would call something that is alive, that can reproduce itself, that has genetic, uh, uh, something like DNA, and all of that kind of stuff. So we just don't know yet. Uh, but in the subsurface is where we have our biggest hope of finding life that, that could have survived. We know that. Um, if you take bacteria and you blast them with billions of years worth of cosmic radiation, put them in a zero G environment like it would be out in space, uh, that they can repair the damage and they can be back in business in, in just a day or two. And so life is way more durable than we thought it was in the past. And so this does allow for the possibility, that, at least, that uh, life uh, could still be there on Mars, but certainly we don't expect any kind of advanced life. It would be the most primitive life that would exist uh, with very, very hostile conditions. One last thing I wanted to look at is, uh, are the moons of Mars? Mars has two moons that are actually captured asteroids, Deimos and Phobos, uh, Greek for fear and terror. And uh, these are just the last two in a whole bunch of captured asteroids that Mars has pulled in in the past. Eventually, these objects will decay in their orbit and smash into the surface. And we've seen many examples of this kind of thing happening on the surface of Mars, where uh, moons that once existed as these captured asteroids uh, have uh, uh, now been destroyed. But if you were to land on one of these, they're very small, you'd only have maybe 1% of your weight. Uh, you could probably jump off of one of these things and achieve escape velocity from the moon. And so that would be pretty amazing, but then there goes your ship, because it landed on that thing, and you're in your own orbit around Mars. So you'd have to hope that uh, maybe you would intersect that moon's orbit uh, in a, <clears throat> the next time around. But, uh, the odds of that happening would be pretty slim, so uh, that would be a big mistake to make. 